periodic table consists of uh, groups, columns coming down, group one, group two, and the B block are the group three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. It also consists of rows or periods. This is row period one, period two, period three, period four. Uh, now let's look at the rows. In each row, as we go from one row to the next, we're adding a new shell. So uh, row one has one shell. Row two has two shells. Row three has three shells. Now, of course, these shells are made up of subshells, which we basically where the electrons are placed in orbital. S so let's look at um, basically what these shells and subshells look like, starting with the S block. Here are S block elements, remember? Here are the P block elements. And as we fill the electrons, we first add S electrons, uh, and then we add P electrons, and then eventually we add D electrons. So let's go to the first shell right here, first shell. Uh, here's the nucleus, uh, and the first shell only has one, basically, subshell. That's the S orbital, and it's denoted by this spherical shape here. Uh, and, of course, we can put two electrons in. As we build up from hydrogen to helium, the next electron would then go into shell 2. So what does shell 2 looks like? Well, shell 2 has got an inner shell 1, and then shell two. So the inner shell consists of, again, the 1s um, orbital. The second or outer shell, shell two, has 2s orbitals and 2p. So we can call these subshells. Here's the 2s and here's the 2p. Now, if we were to look at a diagram uh, of what an element would look like in this particular row, uh, here is an example. Uh, it would have both one uh, shell one and shell two. You can see shell 1 consists of just the 1s orbital. Now shell 2 consists of two subshells or two sets of orbitals. There is the 2s orbital, which is bigger. Uh, electrons are farther away from the nucleus. And three p orbitals, one oriented in the x direction, one oriented in the y direction, and one oriented in the z direction. You can see as we add electrons to these, we're going to get a diffuse electron cloud surrounding the atom. Now let's look at... Uh, row 3 and then ultimately row 4. Row 3 is going to have three uh, subshells in, 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 in uh, shell 3. So here we are. So let's look at this element right here, for instance. Uh, in, sh in row 3, we have three shells, shell 1, 2, 3. Shell 1 has the 1s orbital. Shell 2 has the 2s and the 2p. Now the outer shell, shell 3, has a 3s orbital, has 3p orbitals and it has five d orbitals in the third shell. So again, these are the subshells, and as we go across, we add electrons to those. So again, an element like this uh, in group, um, in period three or row three across the table, or row four, we're going to have, again, very complicated electron structure. We'd have an inner shell with a 1s, we'd have the 2s and the 2p orbitals, and now we're adding the 3s subshells, which would be the 3s, that's the state located in this big yellow sphere. The 3p, again, I'm trying to show those, those, those green oriented along the xyz axis, again, farther away from the nucleus, and there would be 5d orbitals. Uh, it's too sloppy to put them in, but I've only put in one, and here are the 5d orbitals we talked about in class. I've outlined one here, uh, I'll, I'll outline in black, and you can see we're building up this diffuse electron cloud. So if you think about uh, the rows going across, um, as indicated, the number of shells in the row. So row three, uh, period three, would have three shells, one, two, three, and we build up subshells made of atomic orbitals as we proceed.